Hi, Mountaineers. It's me, Mrs. Hoffman. Hopefully you still remember me, especially if you are in fifth or sixth grade this year. Um, I would like to read you another book. I did one before. I don't know if you've seen it yet. And the book I want to read to you is called The Tale of Custard the Dragon. It is written by Ogden Nash and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. And if you look up Lynn Munsinger, you will see that she has illustrated a lot of books that you might know already. Um, the reason I chose The Tale of Custard the Dragon is my whole little girl life, my daddy used to read me this book. And in fact, he didn't read it out of a book like this. He read it out of a big book of children's poetry because it is actually a poem, but it's a story, so it's a story poem. I hope you like it. It has some words in it that some of the younger mountaineers may or may not know, so I made a few little vocabulary cards. It's not a lesson, I promise. I wouldn't do that to you. I just want this to be fun. Anyway, the first word that I wanna to talk to you about is coward. Coward is simply someone who is kind of a little bit of afraid person who lacks courage. Custard. You've probably eaten custard. It's a little like pudding, but even better. It's very rich, and it's made of eggs and milk and sugar, and it's, it's kind of like pudding, but it's better. I know that you'll like this word. Dagger. And it is a short sword-like weapon. Dagger. Rage, Arr, very angry. Unmerciful, if someone is being kind of teasing you and maybe being kind of mean or cruel. Cutlass is a short, slightly curved sword and it's almost like a dagger, but it's a different word. Paled, when someone who maybe doesn't look as healthy as they use their skin gets very pale, maybe when you're sick or when you're scared, your skin pales. Grog, something a pirate might drink. It's a strong, strong drink. Embraced means hugged. You've all been embraced before. You've all embraced someone. It's a hug. And if you know me, you know that I love to hug my students, so if you know me and I know you, I'm sending you a big hug or embrace. Glee, which means just delight, happiness, joy, super happy. This is a really funny word. Gyrate, it means to move around in a circle, kind of like a dance. And finally, Flustered, which means nervous excitement. Like when the teacher calls on you and you're like, uh, uh, I'm not sure I know. Oh no, I get all confused and you get upset with yourself. That's flustered. Now I'm going to start the story of the tale of Custard the Dragon. Listen for the rhyming. Here's the title page. Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a Relio Trulio little pet dragon. Now the name of the little black kitten is was Ink and the little gray mouse she called her Blink. And the little yellow dog was as sharp as mustard. But the dragon was a coward. And she called him Custard. Kind of a funny name for a dragon. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth. And spikes on top of him and scales underneath. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose. And Relio, Trulio, daggers on his toes. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. 
and Ink and Blink chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage, but Custard cried for a nice, safe cage. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, Blink, and Mustard, they rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the Relio, Trulio, Cowardly Dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house. And Blink said, Weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and Mustard rudely asked his age when Custard cried for a nice, safe cage. Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound. Mustard growled and they all looked around. Ouch, cried Ink, and ooh, cried Belinda. For there was a pirate climbing in the window. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right, and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. His beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help, but Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household, and Little Mouse blinked strategically, mouse hold. But up, jump, up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine. Nash clashed his tails like iron in a dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog with his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit. And Custard gobbled him every bit. Belinda embraced him. Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and Blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon who ate the pirate. But, up, but presently up spoke little dog Mustard. I'd been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke Ink and up spoke Blink. We'd be, we'd have been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everyone is braver than me. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her Relio, Trulio, little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears, and Ink and Blink chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage. But Custard keeps tr crying for a nice, safe, Cage. And that is the end of the tale of Custard the Dragon. It's a pretty old story because it's older than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Mountaineers, for watching. I never thought I'd be a YouTuber. What do you think? Anyway, I had a great time reading to you. I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you are being patient and nice to, with, to your parents and patient and sweet to your teachers and doing your best to learn at this crazy, crazy time. Okay, bye-bye.